Ever since Europeans arrived in North America, something alarming has been happening. The land's been losing about 0.07 inches of soil every year. That's nearly double what the USDA considers sustainable. If nothing changes, experts say 95% of U.S. soil could be degraded within 30 years. Grim, right? While better farming methods are crucial, there's another unexpected solution gaining ground. Bison. That's right. The legendary symbol of the American frontier may be key to healing the land they once ruled. Back in the day, bison roamed nearly all of North America, from Alaska to Mexico. Scientists even call that massive region the Great Bison Belt. The bison thrived there for millennia, but things changed fast when horses arrived with European colonizers in the 1500s. Seems like nothing special. Bison started living alongside horses. No big deal. Horses aren't predators that would hunt bison. That's true. But the spread of horses was welcomed by the Plains Indians. They got a way to move around that made it easy to chase herds and hunt bison much more often. By the early 19th century, about 60,000 Plains Indians had between 300,000 and 900,000 horses, which let them hunt on an incredible scale. For example, in 1840, they killed around 500,000 bison for food and another 100,000 for trade in the east. On top of that, horses competed with bison for grazing. Then came cattle, bringing diseases, overgrazing, and competition. By the early 1900s, around 60 million bison had been wiped out. Only a few hundred remained. And with the bison went the prairies. Without these animals, Grasslands lost their diversity and resilience. Native grasses were replaced by weaker species. Cattle overgrazed and didn't replenish the land the way bison did. The result? Desertification. The infamous Dust Bowl of the 1930s blew away 850 million tons of topsoil. But now, bison are making a comeback and helping restore the land. Yellowstone National Park started with just 25 bison. Today, it's home to nearly 6,000. These animals are more than just majestic. They're ecosystem engineers. They aerate the soil, disperse seeds, create micro wetlands with their wallows, and naturally fertilize the land as they graze. Over in Illinois, at the Midwin National Tallgrass Prairie near Chicago, bison were reintroduced to help revive a former military site. Since 2015, they've helped transform nine square miles of land into thriving grassland. In Montana, the American Prairie Project is working to create the largest nature reserve in the continental U.S. They've introduced nearly 1,000 bison across 59,000 acres, aiming for 10,000 animals on 3.2 million acres. Why bison work better than cattle? Well, in Kansas, a long-term study at the Kansa Prairie Biological Station revealed something amazing. In areas grazed by bison, Native plant diversity increased by 86%. In comparison, cattle only boosted biodiversity by about 30%. That's a huge difference. Bison usually graze in tight groups, which creates a patchwork of grass heights, ideal for many species. They trample old plants into the soil, aiding decomposition. Their massive bodies carry seeds across miles, and when they die, their remains nourish the land. Even during droughts like in 2011 and 2012, bison grazed areas recovered better than others. Scientists now see them as a buffer against climate change. Restoring the land goes beyond simply reintroducing animals. It requires a carefully planned approach. That's where holistic planned grazing comes in, a method developed by ecologist Alan Savory. This approach mimics how wild herds once moved with tightly timed rotations that boost soil health and avoid overgrazing. The idea? Move bison in a way that matches natural rhythms, letting the land rest, recover, and regenerate. It's not easy. It takes planning, fences, timing, and monitoring. But when it works, it transforms barren ground into fertile soil. Today, wild bison occupy just 1% of their original range. There are fewer than 20,000 protected on conservation lands. But momentum is building, and dozens of restoration projects are underway. Rewilding with bison may not be fast, but it's working. Bringing back the Great Bison Belt isn't just a dream. It's a growing reality, one hoofprint at a time. What do you think?
Can bison really save the prairies? Let us know in the comments. And if you found this video interesting, give it a like and consider subscribing for more stories on how nature can heal itself with a little help.